The story of the 50 years of the Fugalaf Lung Sydney is one of passion, commitment, dedication, hard work and importantly, transformation. Our home here in Lansdale was built in 1968 and when you look at it inside and out, it is like a time warp. Nothing much has changed. There have been some additions as the family grew, but it remains relatively the same. However, the life of the Fogla mirrors the life of its members. So in 50 years, like Sydney, our people and our ways have changed. We have integrated well and become part and parcel of the Australian culture. We are all enriched by the diversity of cultures. We have transformed from a community of and for Friulani to a community sharing our Italian culture, including that of Friuli to all. Under the umbrella of the Mounties Group, the largest community-based club in Australia, we live as one, celebrating our heritage, celebrating our lucky country. Anyone can build a club. It takes love to build a home. Benvenus al Fogola. Come on in and hear about our home. We opened the club in November 1970. The president at the time was Mr. Castronini. Sì, quello che, che, che ci portava avanti, che aveva le idee, che seguiva questo, questo dream, se vuoi, che vuoi dire. The old Mr. Castronini, not the president, the old fella, being uh, friendly with Mr. Valerio, Ottavio Valerio, then apparently they got together a little group, bit by bit, They got bigger and bigger and bigger. Un pensiero molto molto profondo perché ho avuto l'occasione di essere là la sera che è venuto il professor Valerio e di lì abbiamo ci siamo messi d'accordo di ritrovarsi per fare il primo il primo comitato del Fogolare Furlan. We had a committee of 13 people I think and then we didn't know one another. So we just got together and decided to start this Fogolà Furlan. We managed to form a committee to have a number of members, which soon reached hundreds. We had a temporary office in Bankstown, Jimmy Petrucco's house. That was our registered office until we made enough money through our functions and such, and we bought this block of land. We pulled the house down, we were still raising money because we had no money. Eventually, cleared the land, started building. We built it with the foundations and everything, all voluntary work. We worked and built the club just uh, half the size that it is now. Everybody that was here, all my predecessors and everyone here that um, helped build the club, all did it through volunteering, through donation, uh, they never asked and, and, and got any compensation for it. Everyone put it in their own time and effort where they could. Certain tradesmen put in all the um, marble, the terrazzo for free. An awful lot of labour here is donated for free because that was the community spirit at the time. It, it, the Fogolar was set up mainly to help the young people, young migrants from Italy, which he did. In those years, the centre of our social life, uh, as a migrant, you feel out of place, and so this was where everybody met, and it, you, you felt at home. It was a point of uh, meeting. All the rest of the Friulani were here in Sydney, because Sydney, as you know, is a big city, and we live in everywhere, you know. Get to know a lot of people and of course a lot of cultures as well, especially our culture. We keep doing it and we love to do that. Growing up the families in an uh, environment like we used to go in our whole country in the Friuli region. The club, to me this club is the hub of Italians. It's just perfect. It's small, it's not overrun by large enterprises, it's beautiful. I love it. 
It was a chance to meet and greet. Uh, the, fa the family was easy for mum and dad. They could come up here knowing we'd be safe. Everybody knew who we were. If we got into trouble, they knew immediately. It's a family club. It's always been a for a family. And that's our main reason, because it's always been for the children. With people that you know, especially with the language and everything, and, and the culture, which is, means a lot to us. It means a lot, yeah. In the early days, this place was everything. As I said, I met my wife here. Uh, we grew up, my children grew up here. It was a very, very important place. So I felt the need to relate to my own people, back to my roots, and when I found that Fogola Furlan was a club representing the type of region from Italy, I started to frequent it. And after a while, I made some friends, and I got involved with that. In the early days, uh, mum and dad were uh, part of the founding members of the club, and so I'd be in fact forced to go because I had to stay with my parents of course and then of course that turned out later on when the club was uh, built um, then of course that was a place for us to to come. I started with the Fogola Furlan in uh, 1980 as a barman. I learned you know the first few days uh, collect the glasses and uh, they teach me how to do the drinks and uh, I enjoy a lot uh, to see presidents uh, changing all the time as well. You know, I went through a few of them and uh, I felt like one of the family as well. At the age of 18, 1997, that I didn't have any experience working behind the bar, uh, serving drinks. I, I came in with Dad, a uh, conversation was had between him and Silvano, and I had the job. From that point on, I, uh, I started my uh, I guess my career with, with Club Italia as it is today. At a young age and got involved with, with all the other young people from the, from the club as well. Um, at initially it was just that friendship that we built um, as we grew up. Um, but as we grew up, we, I got appreciated on the heritage of, of Friuli that our, our parents built this club on. Um, and it sort of um, came on to us, or came on to me, and I was very proud of that. And I just wanted to continue that heritage and hopefully bring that up in my life as a grown-up and with my, with my family as well. And it's just continued on. I got involved in the club because I used to virtually live here. We were here every weekend, all our friends were here, and it was just the right thing to do. It felt right. I knew everybody here. That's why I became involved. Looking back, it, it's, it sort of started an important part in our lives, you know, we got involved here. It's always been wonderful to help out if there was, uh, you know, anything that we could help out with. I always enjoy doing that. It's been a, a lifestyle for us, really, <laughs> it was part of our way of life. Well, in those days, there were a lot of little children, a lot of them. You know, you could see all the children sitting around and sometimes 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, they were sitting on, sleeping on the chair because the parents used to dance and whatever. In those days, there was not a lot to do for us ladies and even less for the children. So that's why we build up most of the club for the families, for the children. We started uh, doing things with them. We would come up and buy crostoli, for instance, so that we could sell a tax shop, make a bit of money, but at the same time kept the ladies busy. For those who couldn't help in any other way, they would give their time to cook for everybody. And we're doing all the traditional peasant food, we say, <laughs> but it's not. It's the best food, I mean, you can say, it's a special, they call uh, brovada and cotechino. It's a group of ladies which is, they come in on Thursday, we all be about 20, and we all have lunch together like a day out as well for these ladies at home all the time. And they enjoy that too. We used to do a lot of work. It was everything, it was bingo, it was children doing, it was um, cards, it was crostally making, it was barbecues. The committee used to do a lot of things. I can't remember uh, too many, not that it wasn't too many, I can't remember how many different one. I really enjoyed when we had when they first started the youth club, tried to get the youth club going at the very initial. Youth committee, oh, time flies, but I, I was probably 17, 18 when I first started. 
going in there, probably in the committee for three, three, four years. They were fun times, we'd have organised a lot of discos, a lot of picnics. And it was just the younger people and it, it was, it was just, it was really good. And, and actually later on the youth club, they were going on weekends away, like yeah. the snow trips Yes, yeah, that's when, like that. at a later stage, and yeah, that was really was awesome the for them. Yeah, yeah, it was a good opportunity for us young ones to feel more grown up by doing yeah. our own thing. And, and there was the safety. The yeah, yeah, our parents were really not yeah. worried about that no. because we were with the people of their, their children, their, friend, their children's friends. So they felt that was really we were in no danger at all. I wouldn't know about that. Except maybe today. <laughs> the, the highlights for me were when we came here dancing uh, on a Saturday night um, with all the single ladies with the traditional dancers of those days. We used to run some fantastic discos. Uh, if you weren't in here by 8 o'clock, you didn't get in. It was packed with people. And again, we met a lot of, lot of people, a lot of girls, and it was all, it was all good. <laughs> but a lot of friendships, lifelong friendships were made because of that. Again, we played soccer, we used to train here on a Friday, have a shower, into the disco. So we were a big group of friends. It was just, you know, you knew if someone was missing. The sport of the Fogolar, it keeps uh, members that we got still participating, the mature generation, uh, still like to come here and enjoy uh, the participating or the bocce or the cards. The bocce has been in this club very important and very success successful in my opinion. Uh, in the early days there was lit literally hundreds of people playing bocce here. But the competitive side of bocce was also very important and we produced some very good players. One of our players, uh, Stephen Kiondotto, represented Australia in the World Championship last year and several times before that. And he's one of our younger people, if you like. And we produced quite a lot of players that represented New South Wales and represented Australia and so forth. So it's been very successful. Well, there's no social side of bocce. Most bocce players are serious. So even when they're having a non-competitive game, they will be playing at their best. They call, used to call me Mr. Bocce because they played a lot of bocce. I was involved. And then I got involved in the Bocce Federation in St. Wales. I was the first president and, and so on. But I'm still here and still involved in Bocce. They are looking after all people, ladies and gentlemen, every Thursday. Yes, I used to play tennis. Yeah. Oh, I was looking after the tennis course. I used to come here after work and, and you know, try to get the tennis court uh, ready for the weekend, yeah, because we used to play on weekends, yeah. We usually play Friday nights, yeah. But uh, we were involved with the uh, Italian Cup in a competition here. Yeah, we used to play once a year with the Marconi Club and the Diadora Club at the time, yeah. We did that for quite a few years, yeah. I started playing tennis when I was 24. I played until uh, eight years ago, yeah. <laughs> used to play once a week, yeah. Used to play comp here, yeah. But, uh, well, I'm 76. It's too much for me. <laughs> Originally, when we started the, the association and all that, there were a number of uh, Italian associations in Sydney, and we created a, a festival of sport and we participated as our club and there was the Marconi club and other club and I remember we had all these young people you talk about second generation we had a swimming team we had a table tennis tennis team a, a tennis team a, a soccer team we, we had 50 or 60 kids participating in different sports and this this went on for a number of years five or six maybe ten years it kept us here sport was a, a big thing for this club because we started our first sport here was table tennis and on a Friday night, our parents would come here, come in the bar, and there'd be 50, 60 children out the back there, and we'd learn to play table tennis. We had competition, so the parents come too. The boys bring the parents, you know, or the parents bring the boys too. <laughs> to be a sport president, I enjoyed what I'm doing. Like I call the young, the, the, all the sport, I call it my children. I, I wish him all the best when they win, when they lose. You give him a award. We had a very good coach who trained us how to play and you couldn't wait for the next Friday to come up here and play table tennis. It was fantastic. Most of those people eventually went on to play soccer for the club. 
the uh, it was a uh, time thing. When we were young, it was table tennis. When we got old enough to drive, it was soccer. Three people that started the soccer team. Me, a fellow called Valerio Chiandotto, and another fellow called Peter Solari. And, you know, it, it was a way of getting the young people involved, if you like. Oh, the Fogola Furlan used to have a, a team, a youth team. Um, soccer was a big, big part of the club. We had two teams here um, in the early days, um, and that, that kept, that was growing, that was very popular. I joined the soccer team at 15 years of age. My father was the coach. I stayed till I was 24. It was a whole group of friends. We decided we were going to join and play here, and we did. There was a lot of senior people in the team who were very welcoming, very friendly. I still keep in touch with a lot of them. They've become lifelong friends. You know, two of them were my brother-in-laws. Not that I knew at the time, but you know, they became my brother-in-laws. I am involved in all the best. I must say, I was born in 1932, and we have uh, the first, we have a good group. We had about 50 odd people born the same year. And we had here the first time, uh, when we turned 50, we had our, our first festa, 1932. And after that, every year, once a year, and we're still doing it. So after how many years, so from the 50 years, we're 84 now. They were all special. And we worked hard for these festas, and uh, we looked forward to them actually. And we had we had fun at the same time. Balletto, which is the uh, folk dancing group, because we had our daughter and our son that took part for many years. So whenever there was a function with the balletto, that's one that sticks in my memory. You know? The younger children, all in original costume, and the dancing and chanting in the local language, which is uh, Furlan to us. We were actually part of the first balletto that was, when it was first formed, my husband and I, because uh, he was, he's tone deaf. Hasn't got a bar of music in him, so it was really fun trying to um, watch, <laughs> be, him and, watch him and be in. <laughs> Being involved with the balletto was uh, very exciting, travelling around Sydney and, and showing uh, off our heritage, dancing in front of people and meeting other, other uh, nationalities as well and uh, as well performing at the um, Opera House. We even performed one year at the Rugby League Grand Final one year just beforehand so that was at the old SCG. So we've travelled a fair bit around New South Wales to perform so it's been it's been good and it's been enjoyable. If I nearly cried that day I was so proud of knowing because of my little children and of course they were born in Australia they were proud to wear the colours of the Furlan community. It used to be it used to be so beautiful because the children were all growing up and they, as they were getting older they were still in it. They never they never got out of it. They kept going. And I still do it now. We've had since retired I suppose we've had a couple of reunions um, and we've done a couple of those performances. Every time I've been asked I said absolutely because it's such proud of doing it and I enjoy doing it as well. Carnivale. We always used to dress up for Carnivale and we'd have wonderful prizes. I remember one Carnivale we had so many people. We managed to do it quite, quite well, but uh, it took a lot of planning and a lot of organisation. I done it a few times, you know, once I was like a pilot. I dressed up as a, a 20s, 1920s, one year. Another time I was a nice dress of an Arab. Another year I was a saloon girl. Another time I was like a musketeer. Oh, a gypsy, yeah. I was a gypsy one year. And my wife, she was dressed up like Primavera of Botticelli. One year we did, we dressed up as stormtroopers. <laughs> fun, it was just fun. <laughs> they kept, kept the tradition going. So if you come to a Carnivale Festa this year, it's more or less the same traditional festa as it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or maybe back in the old country? Uh, it was a Carnivale night, which is in February. It was my birthday, and we were going up for a Carnivale for my birthday. And at that stage, I said, oh, we're going to have miss, we're going to have a miss tonight. So they just <laughs> called all the girls that were there in the hall. And um, that's it. <laughs> it just happened. There was no... No real, no, no real, rehearsals. No, no rehearsals, nothing. <laughs> and then the you know, time. yeah, you just went up and um, they congratulated you, gave you a great big bunch of flowers and and a sash and a sash. <laughs> Did you get a crown? I had a crown. Uh, no, no, no. I had a sash. First, yeah, Thank you. That was enough. <laughs> and I 
was 14, that was the, my 14th birthday, <laughs> so I definitely remember that one. <laughs> Always used to have a um, debutante's night, and because we couldn't get anyone of the age of debutantes, we decided to have the three year olds. So we had a three year old debutante's night, and that was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And we were all very proud when our kids took part in that. Beautiful young people born in this country, but with some of the traditions that we hold very dear to our heart. Oh, the debutantes. I had a wonderful group of young people. They were beautiful, and, and that was my, my special day. Yes, it was a special night. It was great. Uh, of course, I was, you know, I was helped by my brother-in-law, uh, Filiberto. Uh, he was the organising officer at that time, and he gave me a big hand. And also, of course, the, the vice president, uh, Maria, uh, Maria, she gave me a big help in those years. Yeah, she was great. Uh, the first picnic was a cast park. We had the Chavidal, which is the one that is up over there and now on the, on the fireplace. A lot of people came. The second picnic was much more, I think there was about, I don't know, close to a thousand people. And we had Polente Bacala. Tanya Day, that was a popular festa. They cooked the chestnuts on the barbecue outside and we'd have all, like, all the traditional Italian food, like there was crostily available. Um. Years back, we have two, three big fireplaces here, big container with the castagne. Oh, easy. We prepare the castagne first, cut it off, pass it to the mains, they cook it, they pass it to another table, we're selling it. That was, I think, the most popular activity for us, for the club. They never done before here in Australia, I don't think. I'm probably safe to say that. And uh, that was a great success. I remember going out in the park and all you could see is people. It was uh, incredible. Yeah, I cook a lot of meat and a lot of chestnuts. As far as cooking the meat, probably about 300 kilos of steaks and about 4,000 kilos of chestnuts. And uh, at that, uh, in those days, in the year, there were four or five thousand people coming, you know. And they park uh, about half a kilometer away. I would help uh, cooking the castagna. We usually have that once a year. Be thousands of people coming to the club on the castagna day to eat the roast chestnut. I like the aspect of coming with my mum and dad and with my friends and, you know, just spending the day in the picnic here at the club, eating really good food. And then that led to later years when I had my own children, to bring my own children to the Castagna Day. So it's just like, you know, circle of life. I come from the region actually where the Castagna was growing. Our, our main income, in my family income was mine from selling the Castagna. Because it reminded me of what I left back in Italy. But it was also important because we helped to pass through those festivities to our young ones. Well, we always get involved at the lower levels where we, we wash dishes, cook sausages or cook the steak and help out as helpers, help out with um, all the preparations for all the festas. In a festa, what you usually have is a combination of food, the traditional song and dance, the, the language. It's all, it all blends in to be one totality. When you're on, when you're on the board here, you're on every night. They just roll over. Just becomes another week. Yes, one in particular when my husband suggested that we have all the people that arrived in boats from Italy to come to the club. So I put an ad in the paper in the Fiamma, con quale nave siete arrivati? And it was it was a blast. I had so many people ring me up. We, we had a, a room full of people, all on different boats, and uh, they got to know each other, and the ones that came out together, they got to see each other after odd 50 years or so, because we're talking about the ones that arrived in the 1950s. So it was, it was just fantastic. Everyone had a wonderful time, and they met up with friends they hadn't seen for 50 years. I organised, with the help of many people here, a Vince Serenity comedy night which was probably one of the biggest nights this club's had. I remember not going home that night, because the night finished about two, and by the time it cleaned up, the sun rose, so I might as well stay here for breakfast. It was a huge, huge event. Yeah, I got to meet Vince Reddy, we had another comedian, but the whole night went 
really well. We had the whole place absolutely packed. Father's Day with the boys performing their athletic skills. Homemade wine tasting, which was very successful. We had so many bottles of wine to judge. Miss Regione d'Italia here on a Friday night. Eight girls from different parts of Italy. We, we even had bus trips. We had lots of bus trips where we used to go everywhere, every, at least two or three times a year. Tulip Festival. And uh, we all got up on the stage and sang Mazzolini di Fiore. We had, uh, and we had people clapping us and it was wonderful. That, that the true Fogelà, Fudlan spirit. Oh, they're all lovely because even when we have the 20, and uh, 45th anniversary, and I couldn't even speak, but it was so emotional for me because I'm still, I'm, I'm living in Australia for the 42, 52 years. I love Australia, my country is here, but I mean, it Friuli is here. We're not doing much, but we're doing for our community. Are they Friulani or Italians or whatever, whoever comes around here, they're all Italians, we're all Italians anyway, but the Friuli is there. <laughs> so always is Friuli. <laughs> We all us. This doesn't make any uh, change, and um, we don't. I won't change. Put it that way. And this club, uh, this association, bring us more happiness and more closer to. It. I'm happy, as I said before. I'm happy to live here. It's my life is here. But um, the Friuli is always in my heart. But love for long. At those initial stages where everybody was very, very, um, very close knit. Like a second family? Yeah, a second family. You know, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to the club, I'm going to the fog. Mm. You know, that's where you that went. Was your life. That was your life. You know, that was our social life as, mm. as I was young. Um, and, you know, being Italian parents, they always sort of worry about you, where you're going, what you're doing. But if you came to the fog, it was all great. It was safe. It was safe. It was a safe environment for families. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you look right, you, you yeah. look at this club and you see you know the, the structure of this club, but every every piece of this club, you know every yeah. every wall, every room has uh, a story to tell. Father Christmas, he was coming down, and that means Gino Voledo. He was meant to be Father Christmas. He was coming down from La Napa, you know, with a bag on the back, and the children were so excited and they believe it was Father Christmas. The Udinese uh, uh, Football Club came here in 1985, organised by the Australian Soccer Federation. And they played in Sydney, Adelaide and Melbourne. And then we had the team here, we organised a function in the Fogolar Furlan. And then the day after we took them for lunch on the Bay of Sydney. Yeah. Well, it was there, the coffee machine. And then we have it all, oh, the non-stop, all night non-stop. This is how many people it was on Friday, and Saturday night, and Sunday, eh? Jeez, it was a lot of coffee they make. Uh, way back in 1976, when the earthquake happened in Friuli, um, that just generated so much uh, spirit. That it was a lot of funding for the terremoto of 76. Well, it's up a bell, so on a bell of participation. We even had a, a seat at the table in Italy to uh, determine the projects that uh, the money would be used for. Delio aveva 41 anni quando una notte di venerdì e precisamente il 22 ottobre del 1977 tornava a casa dopo aver trascorso una serata al Fogolar Furlan assieme agli amici. Ignaro che la morte lo aspettava soltanto a qualche minuto di distanza, Delio con la sua indistruttibile volontà bussava alle porte per convincere tutti che l'idea di formare un Fogolar Furlan a Sydney non era impossibile. We had a big flood here. Huh? At that time was Silvano Dure as a president. I was on the human way, I could not get through. The rescue, the police, they stopped completely. And it was one o'clock in the afternoon. He didn't know what's happening inside. I ring them up and I said, look, I can't get through. There's flood everywhere. The president, he said, hey, you're joking. And then when he had a look through the window, the, the botch area there, he could see the river. 
And then he said, I don't worry, we got a beer, we got food, you know. <laughs> but then he started to worry. At the six o'clock in the afternoon, the rescue, they come in with boat. I remember the singing, um, whether it was at uh, a fest, uh, whether it was at an anniversary ball, whether it was in the early mornings of uh, a New Year's Day, uh, members got together and uh, they sang. They sang their Italian songs, they sang their old Friulano songs. Um, it, was, it was very emotional to see the, the heart that they had. Of, uh, in Friuli. We even had a choir. In the early days, uh, I remember they used to practice at Davino Sadro's home. Uh, that was before we had the club. And then when the club was built, uh, I, I remember as a kid, I used to play in the half-built restaurant and the parents and others were on stage and Davino was the conductor and they were singing. Yeah, and that to me, time. this yeah, is always going to be the Fogelad for Lung, it doesn't matter what name it has. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. The club. yeah. A lot of lovely things we have here, a lot of um, uh, good nights, good reunions, good friends. Back the old day, it was good, I tell you, it was good. The most important thing was the friendliness of the place and the, the ability to walk in here on any night and know everybody sitting at the bar. But I would like the club to remember as a very, very friendly, welcoming place. If there was a legacy, that would be it. It's friendliness. Yeah. Quella la vita, cara. La vita che abbiamo fatto è, è stato bello, è stato un un sentimento di, di quando si è incominciato, come si è incominciato e, e la perseveranza di certi. The members, they record the name Friuli, you know, they can survive this club more. We know where they're gone. The club gone, my son gone, I gone. All disappear, when, like you say, you copy this one, this is only one of his memory for the... Oh. I wish to do this one before. We want to be late. That still can do. Every good uh, dance is going to terminate at one end as soon as the music finishes. Uh, as, a, as a last song, then the club will invite all the older members, even though some of them are not members anymore, to invite them here and say thank you for participating for so many years. If, I, if they can't, come because the mobility is very restricted, get a bus or some sort and pick them all up and bring them here for one weekend and to join all the rest of the, or, or, or the members that are still alive. It did serve the original purpose to, to keep together those minority, keep together those people and make sure they assimilate in a, in a more smooth and proper way into the general public or the general society. My parents are generations have assimilated, we've assimilated, my kids have assimilated even more. When we started to grow older, we become nonny, and the young, the young ones got married and they disappeared around Sydney, and sometimes even around New South Wales, you know. The club tried as hard as it could, but everything has a lifespan. They thought that maybe they could last forever, but uh, eventually, you know, I, it doesn't work in that way. I would say it's hardly hard to say it's dying off, so that is very hard. But I mean, for us, I mean, we're all getting here together, we, we do things, but every, every week, every month, somebody's disappearing or die or pass away, and then they don't come back, and the community's getting old, and the young ones, unfortunately, they don't come. You know, like my daughters, I bring when they was young, later on, they got other thing to do, they don't come anymore, they only come sometime. My children, although they did in the, the, in the beginning, you know, yeah. they used to come up and when they were very little and the little one was part of the balletto for a little while, but it, it got to the stage where they integrated, they're integrated into the society now. So we lost them at the club. I still come here if you invite them for lunch or for dinner, but uh, they come here just to please the parents, not because they feel they need to. We let go too much, too much time pass. By now they got other, other ways of living. 
well, it's nice to see them back, but like I said, it's a dream, an impossible dream. To me, it's no hope that they come in back. Society's changed. Life is so much busier that you don't spend full days at the club like we used to. We then merged with the Veneto Club. We then merged with the Abruzzi Club, and that was became Club Italia. But uh, as I said, it, we still we're still here, and that's the main thing. It's going to one day. It's going to end up. All this is going to end up. Yeah, because that's probably why we got involved with the Mountains now. They helping us keeping on going until until we can, until we're here, yeah. Now we've, I think, secured our uh, future with uh, the Mounties group and we can keep uh, not just the uh, Friuli culture going, but also the Italian. The memory uh, that I have uh, was a good memory. What, what can I say? <laughs> Yeah. That's a tough question. How do you preserve? I don't believe you can. I think it should be something that the story should be passed down from parents to children, but you cannot preserve that sort of thing. Unless they can find a way to involve the future generation into those type of activity to maintain and promote those traditions, the whole thing will be fade away. Keep all the culture and tradition here uh, as part of our amalgamation agreement. How do we do it? We don't know if it's going to be done some by high tech means in the future, such as uh, everything by computer. All we know is we want to preserve it. We want to keep it here so my children and my children's children can come here and then find out what their uh, ancestors did here at the time. We work hard to build up a family and we hope we can keep going the memory to my daughters and the young people, you know, they can remember the club like we do. Yes, the place unfortunately has served its purpose, but it's something that will always live in my memory. And you know, strangely enough, I think this is a, is a success because the club, club is not being patronized by our kids and our grandkids. And this is where the success lies. The fact that uh, the second and third generation Furlani or Italians do not frequent the club, in my opinion, is a testament of how well we've integrated into the broad Australian society. So our kids and grandkids do not need the club anymore. They're Australians. probably one song that um, shows how much they love Friuli. That song was um, Oce Biel Castella Uding, How Beautiful That Castle in Udine. <laughs>
Abusa fata ti vieni. Abusa fata ti vieni. Oh.